$1,000 World Bank and Spanish government funded project for increased agricultural production and productivity in the Gambia. Samuel Ba, GRTS. Well, we're going to take a very short break now. The news continues in just a moment. The NOEC Staff Association, under the Chief Guest of Honor, His Excellency the President of the Republic of the Gambia, Chef Professor Al Haji Dr. Yaya AJJ Jamein, is staging its third annual gala dinner and dance in association with the international superstar Asanjai of Senegal, Jaliba Kuyate and Abu Anfafa. This program is in support of His Excellency's drive to turn the Gambia into a city state by providing all basic and essential services, such as electricity and water, to the Gambian population place irrespective of where they live. The gala dinner is slated for the 25th of January 2013 at the Senegambia Beach Hotel. Tables are as follows. Platinum $60,000, Diamond $50,000, Gold $40,000 and Silver $35,000. Each table comes with 10 gala dinner tickets and cash power raffle tickets. Individual tickets $1,500. January 25th, that is their dance at the Paradise Suits Hotel, Penchami Hall. The tickets are as follows. VIP $600, ordinary $400. Chief guest of honor for the night, Modu Turo Davo, Aja Chan Khan, and Fatu Ture. And at Brikama Joko, which is January 27th, the tickets are $200 flat. Chief guest of honor, Lamin Sane, governor of West Coast Region, Aja Fatu So, Farato Alcalo, and Amidu Ja, Ja Oil. For reservations, please call 366-409-6997-350-0380-296-0992. Please join us. On a journey inside Trust Bank every Tuesday from 7 to 7.30 p.m. Where we hope to give you a unique insight into what we do, why we do it, and, and how it benefits, benefits you. you. Welcome back to GRTS News. African troops have started arriving in Mali as the war against militants continues to rage. Niger and Chad are the latest to mobilize troops to join the fight against Islamists in northern Mali. Addressing troops before their deployment, President Muhammad Yusuf told his troops they are fighting a just war. We have details in this report. 500 troops from Niger, currently stationed at Walam, 130 kilometers from the Malian border, are preparing for battle against Islamists controlling Mali's north. Niger's president, Mohamedou Isufu, paid a morale-boosting visit to the troops Tuesday. He told them they were embarking on a difficult but not impossible mission. War is a test of wills. I am sure of your fervent desire to win. Whether this war proceeds in a classic way or in a more untypical way, we will win this war. Niger's troops will join the International Assistance Mission for Mali. They've just completed a month's special training with French military experts. Their training included combat in desert conditions. They say they're ready and equipped to accomplish their mission. We've received a lot of attention from all sections of the military hierarchy, as well as from the administrative and political hierarchy, to ensure that Niger's battalion has all the means to carry out its mission in the best possible way. Niger's troops have progressively been joined by Chadian soldiers. The Chadians are highly trained, well-equipped, and experienced in desert warfare. Together, they will head overland to northern Mali and the town of Gao, controlled by Mujao Islamist forces. All they're waiting for now is the signal from the international support mission to Mali. 
Israel from West Africa to the Middle East. Israel's elections has resulted in some surprises. Exit polls indicated that there is almost an even split between right-wing and center-left pa center parties. But Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's liquid Batanya bloc won the most Knesset seats, giving right-wing parties a slight edge. Mr. Netanyahu must now form a coalition government, but some of his critics say that is not a sure thing. CNN Sarah Seidner has more. This wasn't the kind of victory Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was hoping for. His victory speech wasn't grand and hawkish, but short and conciliatory. I believe that the results of the election are a chance to make changes that the citizens of Israel are looking for, that serve the general population of the country. I intend to lead these changes, and for this, I've got to make a wide government. I've already begun that. A sitting prime minister with a second chance acknowledging voters want to see change. His coalition had more than 40 seats combined before the vote. After the vote, 30-something. Israelis showed their desire for change in a way that surprised the pollsters and pundits. They gave the second highest number of votes to a new party just formed last year called Yesh Atid, which beat out the established Labor Party by a couple of seats. Its leader, Yair Lapid, is a former TV news anchor who called attention to the high cost of living and social injustice. He's demanded that ultra-Orthodox Jews be required to enlist in the armed forces like everybody else in Israel. The state of Israel is standing in front of uneasy challenges. We are facing economic crises that threaten to destroy the Israeli middle class, facing a world that will boycott us because of the diplomatic freeze and facing the breakdown of social equality. There is only one way that we can face those challenges together. If the exit polls prove accurate, there's only a slim gap between the center-left parties and the right-wing bloc, which was expected to form the government with Netanyahu's coalition. That means Netanyahu may have to reach out to centrist parties while still courting the settler-based party Jewish Home. Jewish Home vehemently opposes a Palestinian state, while the centrist parties support the concept that is one of the underlying fundamentals of the now dormant peace process. And if not, what will this new government look like in the end? Well, we now take our second break. We'll be right back. At Echo Bank, we see a great future. One that's full of opportunity for those who want to be the best. With over 1,000 branches of a single bank across 33 African countries. It's a future where trade can flourish without boundaries. The future is breathtaking, with enormous cross-border investments helping business and government build new infrastructure while individuals achieve their ambitions right across Africa. The future is Pan-African, and EcoBank is the Pan-African Bank. Well, from that, the remainder of our top stories before we go. Efforts to indigenize the Gambian judiciary have moved forward by several notches following the induction of 20 locally trained legal practitioners into the bar. Independent Electoral Commission Chairman al Haji Mustafa Karel and aides have commenced a nationwide awareness raising tour to better prepare voters for the fast approaching local government elections. President Mohamed Yusufu of Niger has defended his decision to send troops to northern Mali, saying the French led war against the Islamists is just. And in Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's liquid Batanyu coalition narrowly won the majority of seats in the Knesset, but analysts say forming a broad-based government could be an uphill task. Well, that seems to be all in this edition of the news. Thanks for your time and see you at 10 for another newscast.